So here we have two townships that sort of cut in half Lake Saxon. So you need to look at both of these maps together. So we've kind of pieced these maps together to show Lake Pageant and Lake Saxon. And um, if we kind of start comparing now a historical chain of, of change that has occurred to this site. Um, so here we have Lake Pageant, all of the sort of swamp and wetland kind of thing features associated with it, Lake Saxon. In 1942, if we look at the same configurations, we see Lake Pageant, Lake Saxon. We see a little bit of change in the wetlands, which is common. The littoral zones of these lakes can change and stuff through time, but um, not significantly. Um, here we have 1943. And then we jump to 1974. Now, Lake Pageant Estates went in late 60s, early 70s. So this is when we've got developments starting along Lake Saxon and Lake Pageant. And what you'll notice here is that we start to get canal formation and channelization going on. There was actually a connection between Lake Saxon and Lake Pageant that was created as part of this development. And what happened in here was also some modification of the shoreline area probably to increase the number of waterfront properties that were available in this development. Now those little black dots, very few of them here on the 1947, uh, 1943 side, and a lot more on the 1974 side, those are homes. Yeah, so this is where Lake Pageant Estates actually was built. Um, and you can see a lot of wetlands, a lot of um, low-lying area in this area here. Over here is orange groves. That's the green dots that you're seeing. And this, when, when I lived here, this was all orange groves, basically. My house was probably one of these up here. 1978, you see all the road system in. Um, you see the configuration of what we know the lake to look like today. Okay, and in 1999, well established with all of the houses built and those canals and those features that I talked about um, are well established with the lakes connecting here. Um, if we then go back and compare, so let's take 1999 and let's compare it to 1847. And we can just readily see the difference in the configuration and shapes, particularly of Lake Saxon that has really changed. Um, and some of that is due to the shrinkage of the site. You, could, you should look and include all of this green area, which is the wetland area surrounding it, because that's that littoral zone where the lake can change in size and shape. So if we now look at where the sinkhole occurred and put the sinkhole occurrence on the 1999 map and we compare to the 1847 map and sort of visualize those together, we can see the sinkhole is actually within or in close proximity to the lake. Um, and what that means is that development has occurred in what used to be the lake. Um, so we're, we're, ge we're in the process of georeferencing all of these and providing this information to Pasco County. Um, we feel this is an important part of the story to understand the historical change that has occurred here. So now this is a 3D model, and how does that, uh, how does that work, Garrett? So this is a uh, 3D model. It's a point cloud, so there's a whole bunch of, or the software gave us a whole bunch of points, and uh, we georeferenced it to uh, where it is in the real world, and now we have the measurements, and we can uh, look at it in 3D and analyze the data. And that includes heights and, and, and differences in length, or at least yes. you know, the size? we can measure uh, across the sinkhole. We can measure the heights uh, anywhere in this point cloud. Um, any of these points around, we can measure distance between them.